When it comes to football fans, I know that IQs can be high, but the patience can be low. And that's exactly what it is with a lot of Ravens fans and Rashad Bateman. Love Rashad Bateman. They love his skill set. They love what he can bring to the team. But since he's missed a lot of time, a lot of significant time due to injury, a lot of Ravens fans are running out or have ran out of patience when it comes to bait. And a lot of discourse last week that I saw amongst Ravens fans leading up to that Browns game since it came out that Rashad Bateman wasn't expected to play, a lot of them were like, oh, it's, it's time to move on. It's time to trade Rashad Bateman. And I was looking at that like, huh? And that actually leads us to our first question that came from my guy, Kevin H., who is a Team Keep It Clean patron, which I appreciate. Thank you very much, Kevin. He said, Bateman ain't looking good. Uh, one thing after another, Zay Flowers is out here showing out. Might be best to move Rashad Bateman. And I just, I don't think that would be a good idea. Reason being is because right now the Baltimore Ravens, they have depth. They have depth at receiver. And the way that we can tell that is because how they've continued to thrive and continue to do their thing, despite Odell Beckham Jr. being out, despite Rashad Bateman even being out. So just imagine, like, when they come back, and Rashad Bateman leading up to this game is looking like he's going to play against the Steelers. But just imagine when he comes back, that will be even more quality depth. When Odell Beckham Jr. returns, that will be even more quality depth. So why would we make a strong position weaker? I, I, I just I, I wouldn't do that, especially during this season, because as we've seen this position that's that's strong right now, it can get weak just like that. Because we went into this season, we went into week one. Oh, Odell Beckham, let's go, Rashad Beckham. Oh, let's go, Zay Flower. Oh, let's go, Nelly. Let's go. Oh, Devin Duvin. Oh, let's go, Tylen Wallace. Okay, let's go. We went into the week one with all that at receivers. So we thinking, oh man, wow, what a great problem to have all these different receivers. Yeah, of course they're gonna all want the ball, but then Bait went down. Odell Beckham Jr. went down. So that depth got tested right away. But it's nice because we have depth. So we were able to withstand the test, but now that we about to get stronger, I would not trade Rashad Bateman away. I think that would be a, a, just a very bad move by the Baltimore Ravens. Now, if if they decided like, they're like you know what, it's not working out, and they did something this offseason, I could see that possibly happening. Now, I don't want it to, but I could see that possibly happening because we know how Eric DaCosta does business, especially if you're not in his future plans. I'm not saying Rashad Bateman is not in Eric DaCosta's future plans. I'm not saying that. But if he doesn't end up being in Eric DaCosta's future plans, because we've seen this story play out before where you got a first round draft pick at the wide receiver position. He's with the Baltimore Ravens for a couple of years. And Ravens like, you know what? We're going to draft another receiver in the first round. And they drafted that other receiver in the first round, and they played together for a year. Then the following year, oh, well, you know what? Hey, it was nice knowing you. Now, we know that Hollywood didn't, did one out. And I'm not saying that Rashad Bateman wants out, so it's a completely different scenario. But still, business is business, so you never know. But I would not do that business with Rashad Bateman during this season because I think it would just not be a good look at all. But something that is a good look Let's hear from our sponsor. Sometimes our favorite football teams can stress us out. The offense ain't showing up. Defense isn't holding it down like it should. The special teams isn't acting so special. And in that case, we might need something to sort of take the edge off a bit. So we grab a glass of our favorite drink and we get to sipping. Responsibly, of course, and if we're 21 or over. But sometimes if you're not careful, after a night of drinks, you might not feel so good the next day. But that's where Z-Biotics comes in to help. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. And here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. And it's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic produce an enzyme to break this byproduct down. And it's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Z-Biotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Every time I have a Z-Biotics before drinking, it makes such a big difference the next day. Even after drinks the night before, I know I'll still wake up that next day feeling great. With this being an NFL season, Season, I know how your favorite football team can make you feel sometimes. So make sure you take Z-Biotics so you don't have to feel like you got cracked back on the football field the next morning. And to get yours, go to zbiotics.com slash engravingvids or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use engravingvids at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com dot com slash engraven vids and use the code engraven
Graven Vids at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. All right, jumping into this next question that also came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Dominic. He said, What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. Just wanted to come on here and say, Can we appreciate how the secondary, for the most part, has been playing way better than I expected? Oh, yeah, you are 2,000% right. We got to appreciate that. Because going into the season, a lot of us were scared, especially me. I was scared, especially when Marlon Humphrey went down, too. I said, oh, no, here we go. But anyway, he said, with Humphrey out and the way Stevens played last year, I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> uh, and in my last question, I was like, cut Stevens. I don't know why he's still here, and he proved me wrong so far. Also, I shout out to Ronald Darby. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's like every game he makes a play when the ball comes his way, and you really never hear his name called because he is doing just his thing on that side of the field. That's true. He's been making some nice open field tackles and just – Really, shout out to Mike McDonald because the tackling, the tackling with this defense has gotten so much better over the past couple of years, like significantly better. It's crazy. Uh, anyway, he said, with Humphrey on the verge of coming back, how do you see the secondary shaping up? And does Humphrey go in the slot? I mean, with Marlon Humphrey, I think it all depends on who the Baltimore Ravens were playing to see if he went in the slot or not. But you do have that option. It just gives you another option, and it gives you uh, not only the best cornerback on your team, but one of the best cornerbacks in the league that you're going to be getting back. So that makes everybody's job that much easier, and that gives you that much more flexibility with the guys that you have already. Then adding Marlon Humphrey to that, oof. Love it. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, great win versus the Browns, and we can do it again against the Steelers like the Texans did. Question for you. Which game do you think Zay Flowers or Zay is going to put Flowers in the end zone? I, I like that one. Nice wordplay right there. I, I expected it last game. I, I've expected it because week one, they gave him the ball a lot. And then week two, they gave him the ball a lot again. And he was getting close. So I was like, oh, yeah, week three is happening against the Colts. Did not happen. And then I was like, all right, week four is happening against the Browns. Did not happen. So you know what? I'm not going to expect it. And then maybe it'll happen uh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the next question, he said, time to put you in the EDC chair. With injuries and needs at certain positions, what trade would you make by the trade deadline, and what would be your offer? I would get Devontae, but I know we can't afford him. Keep doing your thing, fam, and loving your other channel as well. Appreciate that, Javo. Thank you, man. Um, what trade would I do? Yeah, like Y'all know my answer already. Those of y'all who be in the, in the live streams for the games, y'all know my answer already. If I could trade for one thing with the Baltimore Ravens, one thing, whether I picked it up in free agency or traded for it, it would be health. But I know that's kind of like an easy cop-out answer to some people. But if I, if I could trade for one player um, to acquire for the Baltimore Ravens, man, um, maybe I don't want to say left tackle. I know Ronnie Stanley is there, but again, health. Because health is the biggest thing with me. Because I will say left tackle because Ronnie Stanley, you never know. Um, I could say the right tackle, Morgan. Well, Morgan Moses, he's getting ready to come back. So he should be straight. But... Um, because offensive line, that's that's been a big, oh, uh, a pass rusher. Because Jadavion Clowney, he'd be doing his thing, but outside of Jadavion Clowney, who, who, like, yeah, you get it. So whether it's outside linebacker, defensive end, somebody who could bring some nice, consistent pressure. I know Brian Burns and um and, and Daniil Hunter, those have been some names that have been floating around. A lot of Ravens fans talking about them, especially with both teams slacking recently. So a, a, a premium premier pass rush oh then there's um the one that just got cut randy gregory who was just balling out for the cowboys a couple years ago then then the bronco just cut him for they said they want to go younger so hey so that's somebody you, you ain't even got a uh trade for them well broncos haven't officially as of the recording of this video broncos haven't officially released him yet but they probably will unless somebody's in a last second trade um but that could be another option right there and if he becomes a free agent, then Ravens could construct their own contract with him, even though it's somebody else that could probably pay him more and would pay him more. But if the Ravens could get their hands on him, that would be great. Next question came from Jalen. He said, what's up, Ing? I got a two-part question. First, with the way that Geno has been playing, I would love to see Kyle stay at that nickel spot when Marcus Williams comes back. Then we would have two great coverage safeties behind our corners who have been playing great without Marlon. Yeah, hey, I'm with you. I think we all are because with, with Kyle Hamilton, the way that they've been playing him, they have not been playing him like a traditional safety and I love it because that's what they did with him last year and they saw that it worked so going into this year when they traded Chuck Clark away I was thinking okay they're gonna move Kyle Hamilton into Chuck Clark's role nope nope not at all uh they've been they, they have continued and I appreciate it so much because they didn't try to fix something that wasn't broken with Kyle Hamilton they allow him to just not be a safety but just be a baller be a playmaker and that's exactly where he's been doing his thing at so Ravens you keep it up um and he also said the way the offense has been a little inconsistent shows that Todd Monken wasn't just saying things this offseason when he said the offense sucks. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for the content. Yeah, hey, he let us know. 
we gotta appreciate Todd Mungin because he he told us like straight up like oh yeah we 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 not good right now we got a ways to go and the offense does have a ways to go but the thing about it too think about this like we know that this offense is not clicking all the way we know that this offense got a ways to go but they still putting up points they still scoring they still killing it in the red zone right now so just imagine when they actually do start clicking next question came from my guy Howard he said what's happening in Graven we're in the first quarter of the season I'm feeling the Ravens vibes right now but I want to touch on a couple of things that seeming to go un unnoticed or under the radar our inside linebackers Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith are playing outstanding football and getting the well-deserved phrase but don't forget about the big boys up front like Michael Pierce and Broderick Washington and Travis Jones clogging up them blockers keeping them fresh and clean to make those plays that is such a great point, and I appreciate you bringing that up because I, I know on here, I, I don't give those guys enough of a shout-out, the defensive line. So I, I appreciate you bringing that up. I, I need to do that a lot more, so thank you. And he says, second, Lamar's having a very good and efficient season so far, and people are talking about Munkin in the new system. But let's not forget the impact of the QB coaching change from uh, James Urban to T. Martin. I think T's doing a great job with Lamar, and it's flying under the radar. Just curious to hear your thoughts on that. Wow. I, I like how you think because, yeah, all, all, everything that you mentioned – is going a lot over a lot of people's heads, including my own, uh, because it's stuff that I just have not been thinking about like that. But that's a really, really great point, because Lamar Jackson, <laughs> minus the fumbles, uh, he's been doing a phenomenal job, and, and you see the growth. You, you see the offense. You, you see this offense challenging him, and that's exactly what we wanted. An offense that would challenge Lamar because you want to bring the best out of somebody, so you need to challenge him, and that's exactly what Todd Munkin uh, and T. Martin and just the whole company, the whole offensive staff has been doing. Next question came from my guy BB. He said, "What's up, fam? Should the Ravens go after Chase Claypool? Ooh, he was solid when he was in Pittsburgh. He was. He was." Uh, it may be a smart move considering the cap space available. Plus, the Bears could use a fifth-round pick since EDC can't seem to make it happen. <laughs> LOL. Who would you want the Ravens to sign by the trade deadline? Uh, Chase Claypool. Ah, nah, it just nah. Um, Ravens are not really the place to go for a resurgence of your career at the wide receiver position. Even though, hey, maybe these new Ravens are. Maybe they are. They could be. Hey, who knows, baby? But with, with Chase Claypool, I mean. It couldn't hurt. You sign him to the practice squad or something. Because he, he's going to get cut. You, you ain't going to have to trade for Chase Claypool. He's going to get cut. We, we know he's on the way out. Maybe even by the time you see this video, he might have been cut by then. But, um, I mean, it could have hurt. Sign him to the practice squad or something like that. But to bring him in with the intention of him, like, getting significant playing time, I don't see the Ravens doing that. And and you also asked, who would I want the Ravens to sign by the trade deadline? Uh, like I said earlier, I, I would probably go right now, uh, Randy Gregory, because they, they need some more pass rush help. Because Jadavion Clowney, hey, my guy, hashtag JC24, he's been balling, but he can't do it all by himself. Too early for a hot take. Next question came from my guy, Mark JG. He said, what's going on in Graven? Hope all is well with you, your family and team. Keep it clean. I appreciate you. He said, what if I told you wide receiver will be a need along with pass rusher this coming offseason? Oh, yeah, then I would say, yeah, I know. Because Nelson Aguilar, free agent. Rashad Bateman, they got to decide whether they pick up his fifth-year option or not. Odell Beckham Jr. is signed to a one-year deal. It got four void years on the back of it, but he's assigned to a one-year deal. So, yeah, Ray, wide receiver is going to be a need this coming offseason. So, you're 1,000% right, but let's continue to your breakdown. He said, with Bateman and Oway underperforming in their tenor here, with Baltimore, those fifth-year options are dwindling away. Using context, Ravens were being killed with their strength and conditioning, and it's a fact with players coming out and admitting. Adafi Oway was a genetic freak of a project coming out with with no sack production, but the Ravens knew that and still picked him. Rashad was healthy as a horse in college, but had random freak injuries. So with guys like Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, Malik Neighbors, Dallas Turner, Bra Braylon Trice coming out of college and free agents and trades to be, I believe Rashad and Adafi won't have their fifth years picked up and could possibly be trade compensation. Oof. This is my early hot take slash prediction. What will be yours? Obviously, I do want these guys to succeed and be cornerstones for us, but... Will it come down to context or excuses? Uh, that's for you to decide. Peace and blessings to you all, and sorry for the rant. That not that wasn't no rant. You good man? Um, this is a good one right here. Uh, this is this is a really good one right here. Um, right now, the based off of right now, the the trajectory for them isn't looking too good in my opinion. Um, but both of them right now are out with injury. Well, Rashad Bateman looking like he getting ready to come back, but they've missed some time with injury this year. Adafi Away is pretty much he's been healthy for the most part throughout his career, but the production just hasn't been there. He's he's been getting close. He's been getting close. Like it's like man, him and Jadavian Clowney. They are uh, Adafi Away super close. Jadavian Clowney, he'd be super close too. But um, I, I feel like Jadavian Clowney be winning a lot more of his like his, his pass rush matchups. But anyway, um, it's not right now. I don't think it's looking too good 
for Adafi Awe's fifth year option with Rashad Bateman, ooh, it's, 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 it's iffy as well. Um, so both of them, like when they do come back, uh, Rashad Bateman maybe this week and um, Adafi Awe, who knows when, but they got to just go out there and kill it. Now, remember, just if, if their fifth year options weren't picked up, it doesn't mean that's the end all be all. Because maybe they go the Patrick Queen route where, hey, the Ravens don't pick up their fifth-year options, and then in that fourth year, they ball out. They go crazy with it because that's what PQ got going on right now. So he's making it hard on the Ravens. like, And they said that they wanted to resign him, so we'll see what happens. But uh, he's making it tough on the Ravens. Like, look, hey, you see me? You see me balling? Hey, cut the check. So but with Rashad Bateman and Adafi away, um, it just it hasn't been there yet. They show flashes, especially Rashad Bateman. The, the flashes are there The potential is there The ability is there It's just a matter now When he does come back Of opportunity uh, And just staying healthy That's the biggest thing With him and with Adafi away It's just about finishing the job That's it Because again He gets close And he has made some plays now But it's just about Making them more consistently Finishing stuff More consistently Because the, the, the talent is there He just gotta find a way To close